so it is lecture number 16 and here we will discuss in detail about conditional probability mass function and uh, uh, what is happening that uh, uh, as in the first module we discuss about uh, conditional probability and uh, by restatement uh, restating the definition of conditional probability we can talk about multiplication rule we can talk about wage rule and there are various uh, what we call it application of conditional probability. The similar concept will come here that uh, when we will have idea of conditional probability mass function, then from that conditional probability mass function, we can define joint probability mass function. We can talk about wage rule for distribution. And uh, in that sense that if you talk about even learning problem, generally uh, whatever hypothesis function you want to proceed in a probabilistic manner, that happens to be always a conditional distribution or conditional probability mass function. If it is that uh, if the data is observing discrete value, in that case you will have just conditional probability mass function. And that uh, if you know everything about that conditional probability mass function, that means you are very good in that learning problem, whether it is coming from control theory, whether it is coming from signal processing whether it is coming from irrespective of any dynamical system or any any kind of system uh, most of things we will see in random process that uh, this course is meant for probability and random process so i will talk about those system that happens to be random in nature so random processing detail uh, those learning problem also i will discuss like uh, marco model and header marco model those are really interesting kind of model you will see it in in the later phase of this course so and their conditional distribution is playing very important role very important so that's why uh, my suggestion would be that be attentive and learn each and every concept and if you are having any question you can ask that okay so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to discuss about two um, <laughs> examples on expectation and variance for few random variable as part of previous lecture that uh, we just covered theory segment of expectation and variance and few, uh, one one or two example we will talk about few more example afterward i will introduce conditional probability mass function how to come up with uh, that means if you are having a random variable then we need to put condition on some kind of uh, observation that we had already having partial information through partial information so if we, that means conditioning we are introducing uh, conditioning uh, some, some kind of conditioning through that we will see that the, the new probability mass function would have different uh, structure different value uh, different that will have different uh, uh, probability pattern so we will see that conditional property mass function once we will have idea of conditional property mass function then uh, we will talk about how to compute joint property mass function using multiplication rule uh, because simply if i'm asking find the joint property mass function of uh, uh, two random variable which uh, uh, happens together or simultaneously then it would be very difficult tedious task unless it is given to your simple problem so that way that's way if you are having idea of conditional probability and the multiplication rule with the help of that easily you can compute joint probability mass function that means uh, uh, it is simply that two random variable uh, vary together in a same in the same experiment in that case you have to come up with joint probability mass function so that always demands to calculate conditional probability mass function first, then you will be able to calculate joint probability mass function. So those things we will discuss in detail. So coming to that uh, previous part of uh, previous lecture that uh, regarding expectation variance of random variables, I come up with one simple kind of example that the uh, example is coming like this way. Uh, there are actually uh, five candidates for a job uh, where there are two, only two jobs two posts are there in that job two posts are there but five candidates are coming then we have to find the probability a one respect probability of, of one specific situation so what is that situation then question is coming like this way so there are five candidates who for two job openings okay uh, among the five candidate three are women and two are men okay then we are introducing here in this problem uh, a random situation random variable what is that we are saying that let us count x uh, is the number of women who who, who who have been hired okay so x is talking about definitely x would be a random variable so what are the possible value of x 
it would be either zero or it would be one or it would be two that means uh, there would be no uh, woman or there would be one woman there would be two women so that situation is coming so that's the possible value of x is zero one two so we need to find the uh, various situation for x definitely x is a random variable here so uh, first we have to find what is the probability mass function of this uh, random variable x then second we have to find what once we are having uh, all possible value of x and the corresponding probability mass function then we can talk about uh, what is the expectation of that random variable so expectation we are finding in that also we can say that expected value and what once we are having expectation we can find a spreading of the uh, possible value of x how the those value are spreaded it is not like that uh, always it would be spreaded equally likely faster okay it is not because it, it is totally based on the protein mass function so what we have to compute okay so so it is very much essential to compute variance of the uh, random variable so third we have to compute this one okay so these are a very interesting kind of problem you can see it here like this way so simply if i ask uh, uh, tell me what are the possible uh, value of uh, uh, how many possibilities for uh, getting uh, uh, two job for five candidate out of five candidate what are the total number of possibilities would be there anyone how many uh, uh, possible outcome would be there? Anyone would like to comment over? 5C2, yeah, nice. That means, uh, yeah, five. among five people, you are just uh, going to uh, choose two. So that's why 5C2. So that's why so total po possible outcome of hiring two person out of five candidate of five person, it would be uh, 5C2. That means what is the cardinality of sample space that means how many outcome in sample space you will observe you will observe uh, 10 5c2 that means 10 some outcome you will observe okay next question is coming that we we are having situation that uh, we have defined x is talking about number of women that has been hired okay and maximum possible job is two that's why x is taking only three possible value either x would be zero or one or two so we have to take uh, talk about uh, the event x equal to 0 x equal to 1 x equal to 2 okay those scenario so we have to count those things and in order to compute the probability so x equal to 0 uh, it is talking about that means uh, simply uh, no woman has been hired okay so that means we have to find uh, so in that how many outcome are included x equal to 0 if you try to see in the sample of space omega definitely this x equal to 0 it is coming in, in the uh, range of uh, this uh, random variable x omega x it is 0 is coming in omega x so 0 is one possible observation of x so uh, uh, let us uh, count uh, what are the outcome which has been mapped to 0 uh, how many outcome has been mapped to zero so among those uh, composition of uh, man and women what we are calling it so simply uh, that means uh, uh, we are having two job and x equal to zero that means no women what does it mean only man would be higher and uh, for those two jobs so how many men men are there two and uh, out of two men uh, uh, there are two jobs for those two men two jobs so it would happen in uh, to c2 wage so that's where uh, what is the country of uh, what are the outcome which has been mapped to zero only one outcome so that one is count is one so out of 10 outcome only one is mapped to uh, zero so that's where probability of uh, x equal to zero that means probability value of probability mass function at x equal to zero it is defined as probability that x is observing value zero and that would happen to be one by ten so it is very much fine that you come up with value of protein mass function at x equal to zero now we will talk about other value of possible value of x so other possible value of x is one so x equal to one what does it talk about it is talking about uh, there is one woman there is one woman okay and uh, one job will go to one woman and another job is that remaining job that will go to men okay so that's way if you are trying to find uh, what are the possible outcome total number of outcome which has been mapped to one so we are just uh, willing to count we are not trying to see what are the exact outcome we are just trying to innovate that okay so here so out of three women we are having three women so out of three women 
will, they will fight for one job and out of two person they will fight for another the remaining job okay so that's why the count would be here uh, 3c1 uh, and uh, 2c1 and total is 6 that you are counting so the probability value of probability mass function at x equal to 1 it is defined as probability that x is observed value equal to 1 uh, it would be equal to 6 by 10 out of 10 there are 6 possibility for x equal to 0 okay 6 positive outcome uh, will map to x equal to 1 okay so that's the probability of uh, x equal to 1 is 6 by 10 likewise if you are observing x equal to 2 that means two women has been hired for those two job okay post so how many women you are having so how we can count uh, how many outcome has been mapped to x equal to 2 what are the number of outcome which has been mapped to 2 so uh, simply uh, there are three women and and two posts are there so that's where that selection will happen 3c2 3c2 so that means if you simplify it is equal to 3 that means what is the value of protein mass function at x equal to 2 it is equal to protein that x is observing value equal to 2 and it is associated with three outcomes three outcome in the sample space so that's where probability of uh, pro value of protein mass function at x equal to 2 it would be 3 by 10 so you can see that you got the protein mass function for x for x equal to 0 is mapped to 1 by 10 x equal to 1 is mapped to um, what is the protein 6 by 10 x equal to 2 is having protein 3 by 10 so you can put all these uh, value either in uh, graphical approach or you can put in tabular approach so here x equal to 0 is having probability 1 by 10 x equal to 1 is having probability 6 by 10 and x equal to uh, 2 is having probability 3 by 10 why we put this one in tabular form because we uh, we had already done with this probability mass function we are having probability mass function okay now we we are writing this one in this uh, either in tabular form or in graphical form why because we have to compute other things so what are those other uh, we have to find expectation and we have to find variance so how we can find expectation it is just average that means uh, uh, we have to sum the weighted weighted average simply you can say that uh, we have to multiply each uh, object value of x with the corresponding probability so this uh, uh, this uh, sum weighted sum what we call it weighted sum weight is provided by the probability corresponding probability and if you simplify it then uh, the expectation is coming 12 by 10 likewise if you are willing to uh, compute variance then we know from the definition of variance it is what it is expectation of square of mean deviation so this we are calling it uh, mean deviation that means we are having random variable and that we deviate it by the mean by subtracting okay after that we are doing a squaring after that we are finding expectation so it is that's why we are saying that variance is defined as a uh, square of mean deviation okay and if you simplify it everything is already you are having so you can easily calculate variance is equal to 9 by 25 and variance is equal to 9 by 25 generally variance we denote it here we know the exact uh, distribution so variance generally we denote it by sigma square and sigma here we are calling it a standard deviation what is a standard deviation a standard deviation is the square root of the variance that means sigma is the square root of variance and if you are able to calculate variance easily you can calculate uh, a standard deviation as as well so always we write uh, the a standard deviation of a random variable happens to be uh, a square root of variance and if you simplify then you will get 3 by 5 is the standard deviation so you can talk about distribution of the data like here how it is distributed so you can say that you you are having the representative element mean mean is what 12 by 10 or 1.2 you can say that in decimal form and uh, uh, what what is the variability then you call it uh, this one is a mean uh, one simple notation of mean we generally denote it by mu you can call it mu and so uh, uh, this one is just uh, central representation of the data the data falls near to this one then how much what is the spreading the spreading that we measure it that means uh, mu plus sigma towards right up to this uh, data will go in right and mu minus sigma it will go up to left so that is the 
spreading it measure spreading how much you deviate from mu that by sigma sigma right and sigma left so that is that is that's why you can see that if you substitute all these things so all these value are falling uh, between uh, mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma easily you can see it uh, you can verify that so all these are we have already calculated so just uh, uh, again we will do one more calculation that expectation of variance and uh, uniform random variable i think i i would like to skip this one these are very simple i will pass this example here you can see that uh, you are just you what you need in order to calculate expectation and variance you need uh, uh, what are the possible observation of x what are the possible that means what are the possible value of x if you know those possible value very fine after that you will ask what is the distribution so next uh, would be what is the property mass function so here you can see that x is uh, observing value uh, inti integral value from minus 4 to 4 that means x is observing uh, minus 4 minus 3 these are the possible value of x minus 1 0 1 2 3 and 4 these are the possible uh, value of x that x is going to observe and they, if they, it is observing it is observing with uh, uniform probability 1 by 9 that means each one is having same probability uniform probability or equally likely situation and that that's why we, due to that we are getting a probability mass function for this x so we are having probability mass function of uh, this x so we can calculate expectation we can calculate variance everything we can calculate so expectation simply you can applying this formula you will come to see that expectation is 1 by 9 and likewise you can calculate variance so in order to calculate variance it is it is little bit cumbersome to calculate so what you do first you calculate second moment second moment would be uh, what expectation of x square that would be 60 by 9 after that subtract uh, a square of four uh, this uh, first moment that mean from the second moment okay and then you will get your variance so that easily you will get your variance okay so uh, a discrete random variable if talk further then uh, uh, generally discrete uh, we say that uh, uh, we are trying to generalize this uniform situation that uh, we had we are taking value from minus uh, 4 to 4 now we will take uh, a, this a random, a random variable uh, that would take uh, integral value from the, from a given generalized interval and, and in, in, in equally likely situation that probability of observ observing each value would be same so equally likely situation so just we are trying to generalize so from that fashion we come to see that uh, if you are observing integer between any two integer a and b that means a and b a is the first integer you can call it here and b the second integer okay in between we are x is of taking uh, possible value between a and b okay so th there are various uh, uh, integers so we can always count what are the possible number of uh, integers between uh, two integers so that would be b minus a plus one easily from that we can say that so a number of integer between a and b it would be simply you can say that it is it is equal to uh, b is greater than a so b minus a plus it is very simple trick you can uh, see that competition now uh, here all the integer falls between a and b are uh, we are uh, picking it uh, uh, through uniform law that means equally likely situation that's where everyone will have probability 1 by n that means if uh, that uh, integer falls between a and b that those are what a2 a a plus 1 a plus 2 a plus like it, it will go up to b okay so and everyone will have the same probability 1 by n that is 1 by b minus a plus n and if you are taking a an integer which is which is out of this interval uh, out of uh, then that would have probability 0 because we are not picking that we are just focusing between integers a and b so that's where it will have a uniform uh, law uh, and uniform probability mass function 1 by n that's that what what we are calling it so we are having distribution so easily we can compute uh, uh, what is the expectation of this uh, uniform random variable it would be just what middle point middle point because all are equally likely so you see that uh, if you try to uh, put bar with respect to probability with respect to each value of the x then you will see that each one is have each bar is having equal height that means it looks equal height 
all are having equal height so in that perspective equal weight every point is having equal weight so due to that if every point is having equal weight what does it mean simply the central point it would be middle point so that's why expectation is just middle point a plus b by 2 and you can calculate variance the like this way first calculate uh, you are already having first moment then calculate second moment then apply this uh, calculation computation and you will get to see that this is the variance of uh, the random variable which is uh, picking number between a and b uh, uniformly so easily you can calculate variance so all these are the computation of expectation and uh, uh, variance uh, conditional probability mass function that one is more important part of today's lecture so how we define conditional probability mass function so here uh, various situation would be there so simplest word will always remember that if you are very good in understanding of uh, uh, conditional probability that means you are very good in understanding of conditional probability mass function and every onward onward further what, what are based on conditional probability that uh, uh, those things definitely you will understand uh, really in a better way so i'm just uh, discussing from the same segment so first we will come up with conditional probability mass function of a random variable where we put condition on a given event condition on a given event that means we are already having partial information about that event we know that about that event so so due to that uh, the new probability mass function will have different approach so how we define it so we come up with like this way so in a probabilistic model if a certain event a had already occurred then we define conditional probability mass function of the possible observation of the random variable x and condition remember the condition on that event certain event a how we define it so we define conditional probability mass function like this way so we are defining conditional probability mass function of x always write it given a a is already you have already seen you have already observed a so within a you try to see what are the possible value value of x falls within a you are not worrying about outside a just your new universe is a so that's where you will define uh, the distribution of x from the perspective of a as a, a you will treat as a new sample space and from that perspective you will define uh, distribution of x so that's where you are defining distribution of x uh, as how we define uh, conditional probability mass function at x it is defined as this conditional probability that probability that x is observing x given a and we know from the probability the definition of conditional probability x equal to uh, x is observing x this one is simply what it is a one kind of event okay so from the definition of conditional probability how we define it we define it like this way that it is the ratio of the joint probability that x is happening within a how jointly x uh, uh, the random variable x is observing value x uh, within a within a divided by the probability of happening of a that what uh, what is the probability of happening a so it is directly coming from the definition of conditional probability it is just definition of con conditional probability you can observe here a is what it is an event you have already observed and uh, in the perspective of random variable we denote uh, uh, x equal to x it is talking about an event so just we are having two events we have two event situation and we are defining this con conditional probability mass function as a conditional probability this conditional probability okay and it is defined through this ratio okay so further we will elaborate this uh, like uh, this way so here what does it come here you can one more thing will come here so here you can observe that uh, here x is a discrete random variable I am saying here x is a discrete random variable. So uh, the range of x would take only value from the sequences. So all the value of uh, x that is going to observe it can be uh, it it can be put in a single sequence. It can be put in a single sequence. That is the definition of uh, discrete nature or countability. So I had already discussed that. So this range of x we can write in uh, in the form of a single sequence. There is a single sequence. So if you are taking any point from this range of x or any uh, x case any possible observation of random variable x, then we can find the probability mass function of um, x 
at x k how we define it through property that x is observing value x k and uh, how we compute this property we uh, by looking back into inverse image of x k so that means we are looking inverse image of x k how we denote it we denote it by x uh, inverse of x k and inverse image of x k it would be what it would be some possible outcome in the sample of space that outcome we always denoted by one individual outcome we denoted by a small omega so that's where uh, pre image of this one would be this and uh, finally it will define like this way that means it is the collection of all those outcomes which has been mapped to xk which has been quantified to xk okay so for those outcome we are computing probability that probability is giving probability of observing x equal to xk okay and we are giving name to these uh, collection of outcome uh, name we are giving ak we are calling it ak so that's way probability um, mass function at xk is equal to probability that we are uh, the pre image of xk happens to be ak probability of observing xk okay so uh, in that fashion we can say that the events uh, in this perspective we can say that event a1, A2, A3, all these will form a partition of the sample space. So you can see that as per uh, xk has been mapped to ak in the uh, sample space, x1 would map to uh, A2 and individually each each point each point each of point of x uh, would map to some event in sample space and what is happening this mapping is happening in such a way that it defines a partition of the sample space why usually you can see that uh, if you are taking any two pre image ai and aj then you will see that uh, ai is a pre image of xi okay and aj is pre image of xj so easily you can say that there will be no common outcome between ai and aj why anyone would like to highlight why there would be no common element through what condition you are saying that it will, uh, the, there is no common element between ai and aj i have already <laughs> described it but again uh, anyone may point out uh, what what is the important segment uh, that it is missing so why uh, there would be no common element anyone whether am i audible or not anyone would, would like to highlight don't know okay fine being silent means also you don't know so uh, it simply says that uh, uh, if you are suppose uh, there is a common um, element between these two omega then uh, it will say that omega will map to uh, two point in the range of uh, random variable uh, omega if it is omega is there one omega is there then it would map to xj and xi xi and xj so it is simply just uh, what uh, it is uh, disobeying the rule of defining a single valued function so we know that uh, in a single valued function every element is uh, mapped to some element in the range some element in the codomain oh in the range okay so but we never observe that uh, uh, two element in the range will uh, have the same pre image it is not possible so such scenario is not possible for being a function that means uh, through that we, what we call it vertical line test uh, uh, for defining a function so if you are defining a function like if you are taking a circle then circle is not a single valued function why because if you draw a vertical line then it will cut the circle at two points so that's where uh, it, it says that a point if you are taking uh, then that would have two pre images that would have to uh, simply that scenario uh, it is not simply defined like this way so we have to fix uh, this one into uh, branch wise so if you take this upper branch at a time it is a function and you take uh, lower branch in another time then it would be a function so so from that perspective we say that two uh, one omega can't map to two images a one 
uh, element from the domain can't have two images at the same time. So it is not possible. So that's why there is uh, due to the nature of uh, X happens to be a function. So that's where there is no common element between AI and AJ. That means uh, these are empty. Next, uh, it is talking about exhaustion is that means if you take union of all these a cage that means uh, uh, if you take union of all the pre images of x cage then what will happens it will give back your simple space so that means exhaustion is and third one is that that uh, uh, it is talking about that means if you take any possible value of x definitely that would have some image pre image in omega so that means each x cage non empty non empty so that's where simply we say that the each pre images the collection of pre images a1 a2 a3 up to a, this one is defining a partition of omega and hence we can further comment over that we know that if you are having a partition of a sample of space that introduce a partition of any arbitrary event of that experiment as well so we if we come up with an arbitrary event a then uh, uh, that uh, what we had already observed that uh, what we what uh, we are having okay so the, then we can say that if we intersect uh, uh, okay then if you take uh, uh, intersection this intersection so it is what uh, uh, these are disjoint for each different value of x so this would be disjoint why because of the partitioning nature of uh, that ai has already introduced partition of uh, omega so due to that this one is introducing partitioning of a for different different x it is introducing partitioning of a and and hence and also further if you take union of this partition of a, a it, it it give back a, the event a oh okay so simply we can say that uh, uh, here we can take like this way uh, a i intersection a i varies from one to it may depends upon how many points are there x is observing okay so it is defining a partition of the event a okay so due to that uh, that we can apply a law of total probability in order to calculate probability of a so how we can compute probability of a so just apply the multiplication rule and through that uh, you will come to see that probability of a it can be calculated through this way that means uh, calculate through this joint probability okay and here you can apply here this 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 is joint probability so here you can apply the concept of uh, what we call it uh, the concept of uh, multiplication rule here you can apply here for each x here this summation is varying over x so you can apply multiplication rule so how multiplication rule would come here so it would be something like this uh, it depends upon how you are approaching that so you know about the probability of uh, observing x so so simply probability of x would come here uh, okay uh, here it is just uh, if you run over all x then simply it will sum uh, sum to one unification just uh, your new universe it, it is talking about and here i would like to give uh, a, here the pattern here it is talking about adjustiness so that's why some this sum will leads to what one it this sum will leads to one if you from the perspective of a if you try to talk about but uh, what is the form of this anyone would like to highlight what would be the form of this in the uh, framework of protein mass function because uh, you know about x and uh, x is a random variable so that's where you know the protein mass function of uh, x that would be p p of x you know about this so anyone would like to highlight what would be this ratio this uh, conditional protein mass function what is the relation of conditional protein mass function with respect to protein mass function of x anyone don't know okay so it would be simply in next slide i have already uh, described it so it would be just uh, it would have two scenario one scenario that if x is uh, let me one scenario would be that uh, here when x is coming from the uh, 
observe uh, the event a if x is either so there are only two scenario either x would be uh, from the partial information a or x would be not from the partial information of a so that only two scenario are here so x is not from a so that means you don't observe any common thing between x equal to x and a so that means what is the probability of this one this would this this would be null set so it would be zero zero by something is always zero so it is zero when x is not coming from a but if suppose x is coming from a so what would be this one anyone <coughs> what would be the joint probability of x is observing x a and a it would be just p f p of x for the mass function of x because x is it is just talking about uh, uh, probability of observing x that that means what is that it is simply a property that x is, uh, if x is here also x is here so th this would be translated into just probability that x is observing uh, it would be translated into because x is within, within it, uh, a so it would be translated that probability that x is observing this particular x and what does it have what we call it, it is the value of protein mass function at x equal to a small x. Okay, so that's why it is the value of protein mass function at x equal to p of x. Simply we call it p of x and divided by a is already aware of, we are aware of about a occurrence of a, so we know the probability of So the conditional probability mass function uh, condition on a has been defined like this way, this bifurcation way. <coughs> <coughs> so this uh, derivation might be clear to everyone and here uh, if you come up with this conditional probability mass function it is a legitimate probability mass function what is meaning of legitimate that it satisfy all all the concept of being a probability mass function what are those you can simply see that this probability mass function that means conditional probability mass function x given a it is large it lies between 0 and 1 because being a probability you can see it here and this quantity lies between 0 and 1 so ratio would and this quantity also lies between 0 and 1 so that's where ratio would lies between 0 and 1. okay second is normalizing condition that means if you sum up uh, sum up <coughs> all the uh, conditional probability mass function for every x then what will happen this one is constant so it will come out from the summation only uh, this summation of uh, it it would lead to what it will lead, lead to 1 by probability of uh, here uh, <coughs> we are taking <coughs> If you take summation with respect to uh, all x, so just say it is giving this relation, normalizing condition, what we call it. Second condition is already here. And third condition that uh, for uh, finding uh, value of uh, protein mass function for particular event, that uh, that one is very simple. For some event B, easily you can define it. So every property is satisfied by this condition of protein mass function. So it is a legitimate uh, protein mass function, what we call it. Now, if you are willing to visualize this conditional property mass function condition on an event, then we can visualize like this way. So here, the conditional property mass function, uh, how we find it to obtain this one, we add probabilities of the outcome that uh, is common to oh, this event x is equal to x and x that x is also coming from the certain event A. Okay. Okay, when it is coming from that event which is already occurred. Okay, so <coughs> okay, and then we what we do after that we normalize it by probability of a. So situation is coming like this way. So it is defined like this. What I had already mentioned from the definition. Or further, if you uh, are willing to write in the same fashion, then it would be the ratio of uh, value of probability mass function at x divided by probability of a and when x is coming from event a 
and otherwise it would be zero when x is not coming from a and you are taking summation for all x uh, the uh, x that uh, if you uh, it's just satisfy all the property of being a uh, legitimate uh, property mass function and geometry is like this way you can see it here if you are taking an event x is equal to x then it is having uh, what uh, <coughs> Uh, this is the event which has already occurred okay and we try to look uh, into this one uh, this segment this segment which is common to uh, event x equal to a and event a so that uh, that it would be mapped to this and if you're taking another event so we have to uh, see this uh, probability of only this outcome where what is the property of this outcome this like this way it is mapping to like this way this is the visualization of uh, conditional property mass function okay so one example i would like to take here do we have time just one after this example i will finish this lecture so uh, we are just uh, going to compute conditional property mass function condition on an event a okay so it is coming like this way uh, consider we are having a random experiment discrete uh, random variable x okay and uh, we know the property mass function of that p of x we know okay p of x we know about that and what are the possible value of x uh, x will take that also we know now suppose uh, we come up with the pass some partial information a and that partial information it may define in various situations that it may define that x is observing value greater than 10 x may uh, x is observing value between two numbers uh, so various situation would be there it depends upon what what, what is the situation so uh, event that we define like this way in term of x we are defining that uh, x is taking some kind of operation in order to define event okay so for any value of uh, xk any value of x as a xk we can define the following result like this way xk through the definition of uh, conditional property we can define value of uh, property mass conditional, conditional property mass function at xk it is defined as the ratio of uh, value of property mass function at xk divided by property of a when xk is coming from a if xk is not coming from a then this uh, value of property conditional property mass function at xk would be zero okay so this is the simple definition so we consider an experiment of uh, rolling a dice okay and there we we are having partial information about the event a is that uh, it happens to be even numbers so a is including event that uh, contains even numbers so if you roll a dice what are the uh, uh, even numbers so what are the possible even number it would be two four six this would be in a so a is talking about this event okay we are having now we are defining a random variable here x be the uh, roll of dice roll of the dice what uh, so x will here observe what are the possible value of x it will observe one two or three or four or five or six uh, five or six so this po six possible value x will observe okay so here uh, if simply i'm asking what is the distribution of x so here we know that each value of x is equally likely so we observe each value of x through uniform law so easily property mass function of x would be 1 by 6 it would be for each x it would be 1 by 6 easily we can get it okay now suppose we put condition on a then what would be the property mass function of x in that case it it would be defined by and the, uh, this definition conditional property mass function through this conditional uh, probability how we define that value of uh, conditional property mass function at x it is defined by this conditional property that x is observing value x given a so if you try to see that uh, how we define this one it is talking about joint acceptance of x equal to x and a so uh, a is talking about x is even and this one is talking about x equal to x so simply we see that here uh, joint occurrence it is talking about uh, only uh what it is even even uh, even outcome it is talking about even outcome okay uh, so how we can calculate probability so uh probability of uh, so how many uh, we we are having 
x even outcome happens to be uh, 2 4 6 so if you are willing to calculate the value of protein mass function at x equal to 2 uh, x equal to 2 what would be this anyone how calculate value of x uh, uh, value of this condition of protein mass function at x equal to 2 anyone would like to highlight how to calculate it would be ratio of protein mass function of x at equal to 2 divided by probability of a and we are having probability of a is what what is the probability of a we observe there are three outcome and each uh, outcome is having probability 1 by 6 so from here it, you can uh, conclude that probability of a would be uh, 1 by sorry it would be uh, 3 by 6 that means 1 by 2 you can say that simplify it 1 by 2 so here in the similar fashion you can calculate what is the value of protein mass function at x equal to 2 it is 1 by 6 and what is the, what is the value of probability uh, of observing a it is 1 by 2 and if you simplify it will come 1 by 3 likewise for x equal to 4 the conditional probability mass function will would have value uh, 1 by 3 and x equal to 6 also it will have 1 by 3 and if you are taking x equal to 1 then 1 is not in a there is no so he, this simply this uh, denominator it would be 0 so and hence probability that uh, uh, value of conditional probability mass function at uh, x equal to 1 3 and 5 would be 0 so this is the conditional probability mass function you can see that it is different from uh, this probability Okay, other thing we will cover in next class regarding attendance just